Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. I'm going to take another crack at Lake Tahoe. This might be one of the last times until the cold weather comes back. It's going to be probably 70 today. And I'm all strapped up and ready to go. And I'm going to go look for some deeper water. I'm going to try to climb out on one of these points maybe. I don't know. I don't want to hurt myself, but I want to catch a fish. So I had a marathon day on the upper Truckee River for Wilderness with the Monty Patreon yesterday. And I'm wondering, is today going to be a marathon day too, where I'm here until late? But I'm, I'm willing to stay until I get something big or I get skunked and it's dinner time. So it's 5.30 in the morning now. I'm ready to go uh, find myself a spot. I'm at Chimney Beach. Chimney Beach is over there. And that's where all the crowds are going to go today. I'm going to hike this way far. And you'll, have, you'll encounter way fewer people if you go far that way. But I don't want to go so far that I hit the nude beach areas. Because I don't want to see something I can't unsee. I don't want to be calling some hotline later. I saw something horrible today. Can somebody please comfort me? So I'm going to uh, stop short of secret coves or any kind of secrets. There's something called secret cove, I guess. And I think people might go nude there. I'm not sure. That isn't my scene. I'm a clothes person. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Let's go start hiking. It's going to take me probably a good half hour, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour to find a spot where I can fish and I can get my rod secure in the rocks because the boulders are so big down there. So we're just going to have to see. This is going to take a little bit of effort. So let's get started. Chimney Beach can be one of the tougher places to fish just because... You gotta hike so far down and then finding a spot where you can viably get your rods locked into place can be tough. So sometimes it takes a lot of looking. I used to have some spots that were good to go, but they're hard to get to. But the places where I put my rods are underwater <laughs> so I gotta I gotta like reconfigure where I can go <laughs> I fished two stretches of the upper Truckee River yesterday I walked miles man my legs are kind of sore <laughs> so you coming from up there I gotta go all the way down there and then I'm probably gonna hike about another quarter to a half mile along the shore that way so chimney beach is right over there and there's a big chimney on the beach and that's why i guess why they call it chimney beach the remnants of some old cabin or something and then i'm gonna go this way by noon today over there there's gonna be radios playing it's gonna be packed with people there's gonna be boats in the water I'm going over here. The non-radio, non-boats, non-packed with people. So you got a good point out there that's really hard to get out to and I really don't want to climb out there with my cooler and all my stuff. That was my next target but it's completely an island. And it looks like unless I want to swim I'm not getting out there so... I think the answer is I gotta get back on the trail and keep walking. Looks like someone lost their kayak out there just floating with no pilot. So that looked pretty good right there. If I can get out there and find a place to fish, that's that. That's the big if. I don't know, that ain't looking too friendly over there because there's water between some of those rocks. That looks like it could be a go, but it's really steep. So... I'm gonna go climb out there, but I'm gonna leave my crap right here. Cause if you're gonna go scout stuff like this, you really don't want to get your hands full. 
If I know where I'm going, I'm good with uh, carrying all my stuff down there. But if I don't even know where I'm going, I'm not, I'm not risking myself. This is what I mean by leg snapping adventure. <laughs> Climbing over this stuff is just treacherous. So there's nowhere to fish right there. There's, there's just nothing. It's all just straight down into the water. The other side's the same. I think I can work with that right down there. I just, if I keep going and going, I'm just gonna keep finding a lot of imperfect spots. So, at some point, I gotta start fishing. This right here looks pretty good right here. I'm gonna have to do some serious maneuvering if I catch something. But it's got a reasonably flat rock to operate on. And my two rods can probably go right there. So let's get started. Pull up the moving truck. We're going in. So here's my sketchy game plan. My rods are way up there. There's a piece of wood wedged really tight between these rocks so my rod holders are secure. I got my inflated crawler out that way on this side of this big boulder. And I got my power bed this way on this side. It's deeper where my night crawler was. It's like a 38 count from the time my sinker hit the water to the bottom, half pound sinker. And on my power bed, it's only a 27 count. I want to do a little better than that maybe, but I don't know. That's where I want to land the fish. But my rods are over there, way up above me. So if I get something big, mark my word, it's gonna be a circus. But I don't have all morning to look around for the ideal spot. I had to make this as best as possible. So, I say it a thousand times, you gotta catch a fish to lose a fish. So, I think I put myself in about as good a position in the end of June to catch a fish. So let's get to stage one before we worry about stage two. I already have what I'm gonna do kind of planned out if I do hit, hit something big. Uh, but this is definitely where I wanna be for landing fish. This over here is gonna be sketchy. You might even see me go in the water. I'm putting my wallet, and my keys, and my phone, and everything into my backpack just in case I have to take an unexpected dip today. So there it is. The details, inflated crawlers, power bait. I might throw some bacon and eggs, a salmon egg on there or something. Uh, later on, I even have a frozen crud out. I might uh, put a little bit of that tail on there. So we'll just have to see. Start your engines? I don't know. Let's go. Let's catch a fish. Finally got one. We have to be all tied up in the rock for a minute. Got him on my night crawler line. There he is. He's just jumping. I gotta come back and get my net. My tank top is on backwards. All right. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. Everybody just calm down. You gotta get them out of these rocks. When I first set the hook, my line was totally snagged. It's a nice rainbow. I was putting on my tank top, I was sitting with my shirt off for a while. And then, all of a sudden this fish just took it. And when I first set the hook, it was snagged. So I'll tell you what I did. There we go. There's some good eating right there. I was laying on my little nest. And all of a sudden my line, I, he just hit it big, boom, boom. 
But uh, let me uh, get this guy squared away. I'll show him to you, and then I'll tell you what's going on. Let me get my shirt on the right way. <laughs> my shirt's on backwards. There we go. That's some serious eating right there. Big fillets. At least three, maybe four meals. And this fish doesn't even fit in my cooler by a long shot, but I'll keep him fresh for a while anyway. And I got my homemade blocks of ice that I make. So you just gotta sh shatter this up like this. Uh, uh, uh. That's a good one. And dump it on in. Get some fresh ice to keep my fish nice and cold. I'm probably just gonna fillet this guy because that way I can get the fillets underneath the ice and then when I get home I can clean up the rest of the meat off the carcass and my sink in the bag and then I just eat that as appetizers as I'm cooking the fish but I think I'm just gonna have to clean this guy right uh fillet this guy right now because even though I've been I slept in my car so my ice was kind of melted out if I come out here with a fresh block of ice it's enough to cover this whole fish it's just this fish is kind of big and it's not the fattest rainbow but it's 21 inches long even 21 inches and that's a that's a good good meal or four meals I'd say that's easily four meals for me and I got those long fillets and I just take a little knife and I chisel off all the extra meat and I eat that as a pile of scraps in the pan and I cut the fins off too because I like to fry the fins crispy and eat those too it's probably the Filipino in me. Now that I'm properly dressed, I was I was laying out on the rock just kind of eating out my tan lines. I got these tank top tan lines, shirt tan lines. I was just laying out for like 20 minutes out of the whole morning. I pull my shirt up, I'm laying out for 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, boom! As soon as I, I had my shirt halfway on, it was like the fish knew. I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. So I'm putting my shirt on, I got my rod between my legs. And when I went to set the hook at first, it was just snagged. So I just let it loose. I let the line go loose. That's all you can do. It's a long shot, but it's, it's a play. It's the only play you have when you're just a hard snag. And he swam me out of trouble. He swam me out of the rocks. I couldn't believe it. So I got my shirt on backwards. Right? ran down here and before I came down here I practiced coming down here a bunch of times like I, I knew exactly where I was gonna jump how I was gonna do it because you don't want to figure that out when you're stressed out and you have the fish on so what I do is I run kind of some fire drills over this and I know exactly where to step where to go what I can get away with I can't get away with and that way I don't fall when I'm not paying attention because I just I already I'd already done it several times I knew where to go I was lucky I hooked him cast it out over here I don't want to land the fish here there's slime just below the water line and if you step on that you're going in there's no like oh let me gather myself you're going in. So that just worked out. I'm going to get all my stuff gathered up. I'm probably going to leave. Because if I leave any later, I'm just going to have traffic. And if I leave right now, I'm going to have trout for dinner. Climb up over this to get out of here with my cooler and all my stuff. So that, I don't know if the camera shows you just how steep and out of control that is. I'm going to wrap this up. I got to climb out of here. Thank you for joining me on Wilderness of the Monty on this beautiful day in Lake Tahoe. I'll probably get maybe one more of these summertime fishing days in before I come back when it's cold in the fall. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.